Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Can you hear me? Yes. Good evening, teacher. Good evening. How are you today? Fine. Fine. Yes. I'm glad to hear that. And the rest of you? Very fine. Thank you, teacher. Great. Awesome. How was your Monday? Did you work today? Did you work today? Yes. No. Awesome. no? <laughs> you got your day off. Only I, I make exercise. Oh, you work out. Se ejercitó en como gimnasio, ejercicio físico. Yes, oh. I. Okay, that is workout. Ah, okay. Excellent that you are doing that. So to keep you healthy, that's uh, awesome. Congratulations. <laughs> it's important Thank you. after your health as well. Yes. Yes, excellent. And the rest of you, how was your Monday? No one to speak today? <laughs> Hi, teacher. Hi, miss. Hi, how are you doing today? Well, it's almost tired. Tired? Right now, yes. Because uh, I have a very task to do in, in this day. And, and right now, I'm driving to home to take a class with, with me, other partners or friends. Okay, I understand, yes. Usually Mondays are difficult uh, with a yeah. lot of uh, assignments or tasks to do at work. But yeah, uh, uh, well, fortunately, you're home. You just uh, finish the class, and then you will be able to rest. <laughs> <laughs> and have you worked in the platform? I see that some of you have worked in the platform. I saw someone just wrote about an exercise, but I'm not able to see the exercise number here. Have you had troubles with the exercises or is there any exercise that you would like to discuss before we start the class? Remember that for the second week, you have to finish section one, two, three, and also the midterm exam. And the people from yes, administration- I finished. Oh, okay, I that's great. Section number one, two, three, and four. Only Excellent, five. awesome. Uh, were you the one who was uh, asking for an exercise? Yes, I see. Did you solve the exercise? I don't know what is the exercise number. So everything is okay with your exercises, Stephanie? Yes, but I have a, a problem with exer the exercise, the section number three in the exam. Uh, did you solve it? Uh, no. Not yet. Not yet. Okay, we will, um, we will check that. All right, here we are. It's section number three, right? Yes. For the midterm exam. Mm -hmm. 
number two, uh, the exam number two. All right, let's see. Well, this is the first part. It is, um, let us check. It's rewriting, listening, or this one? Is this one? I cannot see that one. Is ese este el ejercicio? Yes. Number three. The number two. Three. Right. Good to my don't sit there. Um, don't sit and should be, but let's see. Has anybody um, completed it? Let's see. Teacher, I have this take out the garbage. With the exercise three. Would you mind not sitting? It should be with double G and then there. Let's see if it's, um, what is my question mark? I found it. Okay. Would you mind not sitting there? Vamos a poner la W with caps. Would you mind not say, let's see. Would you not the chase the not three? sitting there? It's number three. The number, number three. three teacher. Three. Yeah, I'm sorry. I don't know what is it feeling me like. Um, yeah, does. Ah, yo le estoy escribiendo en otro lado que no es. <laughs> okay. You mind not sitting there. Okay, entonces sería ah, okay. así. Would. Con would w mind, grande, would you mind not no. sitting there? Acuérdense with WT, la sit, sitting there. Ah, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you, teacher. Okay. Why, teacher? Why, you... why is what? Why is the answer like that or the spelling? Yes, yes. I don't get it. <laughs> um, Why is, mm -hmm. is the, the answer different, the sitting? And the spelling of the verb sitting, remember that in order para hacer los gerunds, para ponerle el ing, eh, acuérdense que hay ciertas reglas. El verbo regular es sit, ¿verdad? Entonces, no, en este caso, no solo le agrego el ing, ¿por qué? Porque este verbo eh, lleva el patrón de eh, consonante, vocal y consonante, consonante, y suena con estrés, sit, sit. Entonces tenemos que doblar la última consonante y agregar el ing. I understand, teacher, thanks. Okay, you're more than welcome. Quisieran que repasemos esas spelling rules. Las podemos repasar mañana. Sí, yes, yes. Okay, entonces voy a incluir material para repasar las spelling rules para agregar ING mañana. Voy a incluir una slide o si no les voy a mandar un documentito aparte. Para repasar eso y cualquier cosa que sientan dudas o quieran saber, pregúntenlo, así como, como lo hizo ya la compañera, para pues eh, ir reforzando que para eso estamos. Okay. ok. So, mañana ya lo voy a anotar por ahí, si no se me olvida. <risa> ok. Spelling roots with I. Ok. Any other question or any other exercise that you're tr having troubles with? Okay, if there are no more questions, we can continue. 
with our class for today. Uh, we share the screen. Okay, but I need this slide to make it bigger. Let me put this down. We go aside and then I watch this figure. No me obedece. Why? <laughs> ¿Qué le pasa? Se trabó. <laughs> oh, God, you got stuck. Okay, uh, can you see my screen? Yes. Yes. Okay, so for today, we're going to finish section one. And we're going to go with this request with models. And would you mind? Uh, this, we have a video about this topic on the platform. And this is what we're going to do right now. We're going to watch the video and then we're going to explain more about that. Let me get ready with this. Teacher, póngalo otra vez, es que no me agarra. Quiero ver si yo lo he escrito mal. Yeah, okay. Section number three and the uh, midterm. Um, veamos, era el segundo ejercicio. Este, ¿verdad? Yes. Se lo voy a escribir. ¿Puede ver el chat? Yes. Vea, ahorita vamos, chat. <coughs> Ahí está en el chat. Ya okay, lo vio. Thank you, teacher. Ahí la yes. puede copiar. Porque sí, como no sale completo en la pantalla, hay que estarlo moviendo. But there you go. Y para los demás, cuando ya lleguen a ese ejercicio, ya saben cuál es la respuesta. Ya le soplamos. Ok. <laughs> Let's watch this video. It's request with models would... Would you mind? Let's watch the video and then we're going to discuss and practice. Let me share sound with you. All right. Usually we add the word please at the end of the request when using could. <sighs> and we use notice when to use the simple form of a verb. Hi, we're about to make requests using modal verbs. Notice when to use the simple form of a verb and when to use a gerund. Stay around for more explanation. Requests with modals and would you mind. Modal plus simple form of verb. Can you turn the stereo off? Could you close the door, please? Would you please take your garbage out? Would you mind plus gerund. Would you mind turning the stereo down? Would you mind closing the door, please? Would you mind not putting your garbage here? When we talk about requests, it is okay to say, please turn the stereo off to people we know well. We should use a more polite request, however, for neighbors and strangers. Models become more formal and more polite from can to could to would. Notice the structure, model plus subject plus simple form of verb. Usually, we add the word please at the end of the request when using could, and we use please in the middle of the sentence to make a stronger emphasis on the request with would. However, please may be omitted. Now let's go over with would you mind. When we use the entire expression would you mind, the verb which follows must be a gerund. This is how it is formed. Would you mind plus gerund or verb plus ing plus complement? We want you to notice two things. The use of please at the very end of the request. Remember, you may or may not add it. And also notice a negative request. Would you mind plus not plus gerund or verb plus ing plus complement? Would you mind writing three unusual requests on our discussion box? I have one for you. Could you lend me your toothbrush? Go ahead and have fun. Let 
Okay. How was this topic for you? Do you feel it's easy or it's difficult? Any questions about this? No questions. The, is there any question about the video or any doubt that you may have about the topic? When is gerunds, cuando es negativo y dice don't, no vamos a poner don't, sino que not. Exactly. Yes, that is correct. Okay. So we have the two ways, right? The model plus simple form of the verb. This is, um, in this case, when we are using could, can, or would, pero sin el mind. Si usamos el mind, entonces ya es como una, es más polite, es, es, es más eh, formal cuando pregunto, pedimos algo usando would you mind. Eh, esta frase completa, would you mind, luego que viene después del would you mind, el verbo más ing, lo que se conoce como un gerund. Would you mind turning the music down? Would you mind closing the door? Please, el please es opcional. Lo pueden poner o pueden omitirlo y no hay ningún problema. Eh, en cambio, cuando no utilizamos el mind, sino que solo vamos con auxiliar, puede ser can, could, or would, el verbo va a ir en forma simple. Si se fijan acá, no se le ha agregado nada al verbo. ¿Ok? ¿Preguntas? ¿No questions? Uh, me, I just want to ask something. And the, on the first part, where it said model plus simple form of, of verb, uh, we got the one that is, would you please take your garbage out? So in this part, we don't need to use the, would you mind? Because of the, the verb, it's just uh, as a simple form. Uh-huh. Okay. Eh, tenemos las dos formas, esas son las dos formas de pedir algo. Lo puede hacer así, como ya lo mencionó, utilizando el verbo en forma simple y se le puede agregar el please. O lo puedo hacer utilizando el mind, pero si utilizo mind, tengo que utilizar el gerund. Uh -huh. okay. Son dos okay. formas con el mismo objetivo. El fin es el mismo, solo que la estructura gramatical cambia y también el context. Algo importante también es recalcar que el can es como más informal, ¿verdad? Puede ser eh, eh, más formal could y would. Teacher, when you, you use would you mind, is more polite. Es aún más polite. Uh -huh. Es cuando pedimos okay. algo de manera súper amable. Y super educada. Would you mind? Lo mismo puede hacer con could y would. Y podemos agregar please. Estamos pidiendo un favor, ¿verdad? Estamos pidiendo que nos ayuden con algo. Entonces, es, sería, es bueno utilizar el please. Aunque tampoco es como que le, le, le afecta que no lo use. Puede no utilizarlo. Any other question? Okay, and something important here is that we, would you mind in case of the, we are, um, cuando pregunten con would you mind, hay que ser cuidadosos porque si eh, la uno, en la uno, Tenemos, could you lend me twenty dollars? Could you lend me twenty dollars? ¿Qué está pidiendo? Si le puedo prestar veinte dólares. Okay. Bien. Darme veinte dólares. Yes. Ajá. Uh -huh. Y si pregunto yo, 
would you mind? Yo lo cambio. Digo, would you mind lending me? Would you mind lending me $20? ¿Te importaría prestarme $20? Ajá. Uh -huh. uh, what would be the answer? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I can don't have any questions. Okay, if the answer is negative, you can say, sorry, I, I don't have enough money, or I'm sorry, um, I ran out of money, etc. Pero si alguien le pregunta, would you mind lending me $20? Y usted se los quiere prestar, ¿cómo le contestaría? Yes, when you want. Okay, that yes, was the... Ajá, ese es el punto. Acuérdense que si les es, would you mind, es como decirle, te importaría. Si yo le pregunto, ¿te importaría prestarme cinco dólares? Y no. me dice, yes, es como que, no. <ríe> o sea, si le molesta o si le no. borra, es como que. Entonces, en ese caso, usted le puede decir, no hay problema. No era problem. Here you are. No es un problema, aquí tienes. Ok. Teacher, yes. If I say yes, I would. Um, um, it, Not it, good. No, it, 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 we need to omit the yes. Okay, I would. I would be glad to help you. Uh huh. Okay. Estaría encantada de ayudarte. I would be glad to help you. When do you need them? Para cuando los necesitas. Uh huh. Pero si entra la respuesta con un yes, eh, puede dar ese malentendido. Uh, so, literally. Um, I'm sorry, is I didn't that get... Why? Because is that about... The question is about... Is because you are explaining that... How will be the, the answer if you ask to us? Uh, would you mind to lending me twenty dollars? And if we want to lending you the money, but we cannot say yes, I would. Is yes. that because Americans are really literally? Yes. Uh, uh, it is the. Uh, es por eso. Igual. Uh, uh, para tener mucho cuidado con eso, cuando sea un request con would you mind y su respuesta sea así, te voy a ayudar con eso, no hay que responder con yes. Eh, en cualquier caso, porque si yo le pregunto, would you mind opening the door? ¿Te importaría abrir la puerta? Y usted me dice yes. Entonces se entiende como que sí le, o sea, lo molesté con eso. Es una molestia. Would you mind? Y usted dice yes. So, in this case, is it not a problem? No hay problema. I would be glad to help sure. you with that. Pero no responder yes, un request con would you mind. Mm -hmm. Sí, sure. es como dar okay. una respuesta. Sorry. Es como no, dar no. una respuesta negativa no. para hacerlo positivo. Eh, más o menos como así, sí. Lo que deben de evitar es contestar con un yes. Cuando sea, okay. ajá, o sea, si usted va a hacer el favor, no conteste con yes. Eh, Entonces, you can say sure, you can, or I would be glad to help you. Not a problem, o no es problema. Uh -huh. Un simple sure. not a problem. ¿Sí? El sí o no prácticamente viene siendo la respuesta a would you mind, si prácticamente si le molesta o no. Entonces, para contestar afirmativamente, siempre tenemos que decir no, porque no nos molesta hacer, eh, hacer lo que nos han pedido. Exacto. Entonces, como si no hay problema. No hay problema. I will do that for you. No hay problema. Haré eso por ti. No no hay problema. I will do that for you. And that's it. Mm -hmm. Igual con el can. La pronunciación de can, afirmativo y can, negative, es bien difícil a veces captar. Entonces nos podemos meter eh, en problemas con un can afirmativo. Entonces, uh, eh, 
el utilizar expresiones como sure, I, I can definitely do that for you. Eh, evitar el que a veces nos salva de problemas. Entonces, eh, I'll be glad to do that for you. I can go ahead and do this for you. Eh, como hay que ayudar a que eso suene exactamente como queremos. Porque si el, es difícil la pronunciación también del can affirmative y can't negative. Right? So hay que hacer énfasis en eso también. Eh, any question about this? No questions, teacher. Thank you. Okay. So let's do this exercise in part A. It says match the request in column A with the appropriate responses in column B. Then compare with a partner and practice them. More than one answer may be possible. So I'll give you time for you to read the request and match them with the most appropriate response or responses because more than one option uh, can be possible. I'll give you time for you to think in the answer. Okay, ready? Yes. 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 Okay. Um, let me know if you see the message to join the rooms. Vamos a ver mm -hmm. si podemos hacer los breakout rooms. And then you uh, practice um, with the request and the answers. For example, in the number one, if I ask you, um, Jesus, could you lend me twenty dollars? I'm sorry, I can't. I don't have any cash. Okay, perfect. So, and that way we're going to take turns. Let me see. Uh, los voy a poner ahorita en los breakout rooms. Si les sale el mensajito de Elena ahí, join o unirse, me avisan. Okay, there you are. Very good. I see that you're joining the rooms. Excellent. Yeah. <laughs>
Okay. Now I'm gonna and then my screenshot. That is the presentation. I'm sure I shared it. Slide number. Okay, that's this one. Okay, see that almost everybody is here. <laughs> okay, how was your practice? Yes. All right. That's great. That's great. Excellent. Okay. But I... there was one people who didn't, well, he couldn't practice because there was not enough time. 
All right, thank you so much for letting me know. So for the next exercise, I will allow you some more time. I was just checking because the uh, last time I couldn't use the breakout rooms, but it's good to know that everything is working and that I need to give you more time. <laughs> okay, is, is, that's why, because we were full. Oh, no, no, okay. So I'm going to allow you more time for the next practice. Uh, but yes, uh, I think that sometimes it, it is that you need to more time, more practice, and this speaking exercise are excellent for you. Okay, so uh, are you able to see my screen? Yes. Yes. All right, yes. this is the next exercise that I have for you. Uh, in this, we're going to match the words and phrases in columns A or B. So we have uh, we can practice pronunciation. Let's repeat. Pick up. Pick up. Pick up. Pick up. Not criticize. Not, not, not criticize. Not criticize. Mail. 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 Not talk. Not, not, talk. not talk. Put away. Put away. Put away. Put away. Put away. Take off. Take off. Take off. Turn down. Turn down. Turn down. Turn down. Clean up. Clean up. Your bedroom. Your bedroom. Some milk. Some milk. The groceries. The groceries. Your sunglasses. Your sunglasses. These bills. These bills. The TV. The TV. So loudly. So loudly. My friends. My friends. Okay. Any question about vocabulary? Mm. Uh, teacher, yes. uh, uh, the loudly. What the pronunciation? Loudly. 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 Yes, loudly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Loudly. Any other question? What is criticize? Criticize as criticar. Uh -huh. uh, criticar. Criticize. And and so loudly. What does it mean? Eh, demasiado alto cuando Los se refiere a volumen puede ser de la voz de la música uh -huh. ok, thank you uh, teacher, what means the groceries? Oiga, oiga, oiga. Uh, the groceries oiga. son los abarrotes oiga. ok, thanks uh -huh. los abarrotes los alimentos uh -huh. tienda de abarrotes Ah, the groceries, ajá, los como los comprados. Eh, la tienda de abarrotes puede ser una grocery store. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good questions. Eh, Bills son las cuentas, ¿verdad? Ah, como... cuentas, recibos. Ajá. ajá. Okay. All right. So. In this case, we have put together, and the number one is done, pick up some milk. Now, how would you join the number, the second one? Not criticize. My friends. friends. My friends, that is correct. Sorry. Not criticize my friends. Fail. Excuse. Mail these, these, these bills. Yes. Very good. Not talk. So, so loudly. loudly. So loudly. So loudly. Uh -huh. loudly. loudly. Remember it's out. Loudly. 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 Excellent. Not loudly. talk so loudly. Now put away. Put away the groceries. The groceries. The groceries. The groceries. Uh -huh. Put away the groceries. Groceries. Uh, take off. Take off. Your sunglasses. Excellent. Your sunglasses. Your sunglasses. sunglasses. Very good. Turn down. The TV. The TV. The TV. Clean up. Your bedroom. Your bedroom. Excellent. Okay, good. So, as you see, uh, here we have the answers also. And number two, not criticize my friends. Uh, number three, mail these bills. Number four, not talking so loudly. Number five, put away the groceries. 
Number take six, off. take off no. your sunglasses. Number Very seven, nice. turn down the TV. And clean finally, the number bedroom. eight, clean up your bedroom. So with this, we are going to write request using these phrases, write the request. For example, the number one, you remember number one is pick up, pick up some, some milk. milk. Now, making a request using pick up some milk would be, would you would mind, you mind? Picking up some milk. Okay. Now I'll give you some time for you to write the rest of the request. Les voy a poner la pantalla anterior para que ustedes escriban los requests. Uh, remember to take this grammar chart into account. That is the one that you have just practiced. So pueden escribirlos con would you mind? plus ing or with can, could, or would, and the verb in infinitive or in simple form. You can do it both ways. So let's practice. Quizás mejor les dejo esta, ¿verdad? Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, you ready? Yes. Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> I'll give you two minutes more. Okay. Welcome. Okay. 
Okay, it is time. Uh, volunteer for number two. Me, me. Okay, Maria. Um, okay. Um, would you mind not criticizing my friends? Excellent. Would you mind not criticizing my friends? Excellent. Thank you so much, Maria. Uh, volunteer for number three. Me. It's for me. No. Okay, Carol. Okay. Uh, le puse. Can you? Uh, no sé si está bien. Can you not talking so loudly? Yes. Okay. Very good. That was good for number four. Excellent. Uh, volunteer for number three. Okay. Me teacher. <laughs> okay, thank you so much. Me teacher. The, mm -hmm. the first. Christina? Yes. If you could you mind pouring away the groceries? Okay, would you mind putting away the groceries? Very good. Uh, thank you so much. Number three, a volunteer for number three. Byron. Me. Okay. Can you nail this pill? Mail these pills? Excellent. Thank you so much. Jose, do you have the number six? Or anybody else who would like to participate with the number six? Manuel, okay. Would you mind taking your sunglasses, teacher? Would you mind? Taking off your sunglasses. Very good. Manuel, thank you so much. Number seven. Number seven. Uh, yes. Would you mind turning down the TV? Excellent. Thank you so much. And Luis, hey, teacher. Number eight. Uh, can you clean up your bedroom? Excellent. Can you clean up your bedroom? Very good. You did a very nice job with this. So, mañana vamos a seguir practicando con esto, especialmente con lo de los ING. Ya tengo por aquí calendarizado. <laughs> okay. Um, now, we have the, for the section two, infinitive and gerunds of uses and purposes. So, vamos a seguir utilizando gerunds. Y también vamos a usar infinitive. So it is important to review the, the spelling rules for the gerunds or the ing because we're going to continue with that topic. And that is the first one in section number two. So we're going to watch the video about the infinitives and gerunds for uses and purposes. Share my screen. Where is the session number two? Neighbor faces neighbor. Okay, here we are. Let me see if I'm sharing some. Yes. Thank you. 
Hi, welcome. Join us in this new section. We're about to explain that we can describe how something is used by either an infinitive or a gerund. Notice the meaning is the same. Pay attention and stay with us. Infinitives and gerunds for uses and purposes. Infinitives. I use my computer to send emails. Computers are often used to pay bills. Gerunds. I use my computer for sending emails. Computers are often used for paying bills. As said in our intro video, we will study infinitives and gerunds to express use and purposes. Keep in mind the meaning doesn't change. What changes is the structure. So let's go over the explanation on the difference between the two forms. With an infinitive, we must use to plus verb. Example, I use my cell phone to call my friends. To call my friends is the purpose. With a gerund, we must use for plus verb plus ing. Example, I use my cell phone for calling my friends. For calling my friends is the purpose. Notice on both examples, the purpose or use is the same. It is also important for you to notice when using infinitives, we must use the particle to before the verb. And when we use gerunds, we use the word for. You can't say, I use my computer to sending emails, nor I use my computer for send emails. Okay, that's the video about the uses of the gerunds. Was the video clear enough? ¿Cómo sienten ese tema? ¿Está claro? ¿Está difícil? ¿Cómo sintieron el video? It's clear. Kind of. It's clear? Okay. It's okay. It's a joke. <laughs> okay, it's okay for you. Good. So, um, no questions about that. Okay, just to make a recap, remember that uh, in this case, well, we can use infinitives and gerunds for different things, right? But in this case, we're going to use them to state the use or the purpose of something. So remember that um, the meaning is going to be the same. The meaning is not changing. You can say the same thing using this structure with the gerund or with an infinitive. The meaning will be the same. The only thing that will change is the grammar structure. When we make an infinitive, we always have to use the to before the verb. And the verb is going to be in the simple form, meaning that we are not going to change it. We are not going to add anything to the verb itself, but before the verb, we need to use to. And we had an example here. I use my cell phone to call my friends. We are stating the use that, that I'm giving to my cell phone. I use my cell phone to call my friend. As you see, the particle to, and then the verb in the simple form. Uh, now, with a gerund, saying the same, using a gerund, I need to follow this formula. I'm going to use the preposition for, then the verb, and then I'm going to add the ing to make it gerund. And the sentence will be, I use my cell phone for calling my friend. Okay, as you can see, here is the preposition for, and then the verb plus ing call plus ing calling, for calling my friend. In both sentences, I am expressing the use that I'm giving to my cell phone but in different grammar structures and the meaning is the same, exactly the same. Questions? Teacher, I have a question. Yes, Jenny? The gerunds always uh, we need to form the word for, or is correct we need only ing in the verb? 
because I I saw the video uh, when don't use the form only the verb plus ing. Uh, for this structure. Estaba estudiando esto en un video en YouTube y no usaban el for, solo el ing en el verbo. Entonces me quedé con esa duda si lo hacían correcto. Ajá, es que los gerund um, tienen varios usos, como les decía yo. No sé si el video que usted vio era siempre eh, eh, para el mismo tema que este, en este caso estamos utilizando un gerund para... Eh, decir cuál es el uso o propósito de algo. Eh, voy a borrar aquí. Porque los gerunds, si yo busco el tema gerunds, el gerund tiene bastantes significados. El gerund puede ser eh, para iniciar una oración cuando el, el sujeto de la oración es el verbo. Entonces yo lo empiezo con un... Um, eh, gerund. Por ejemplo, si yo quiero decir fumar es dañino para la salud. So, in this case, el gerund me está sirviendo como sujeto de la oración. Cuando este es el caso, eh, no necesito el for porque es otro uso. Aquí está funcionando como sujeto de esta oración. Siempre que voy a un, utilizar un verbo como sujeto de la oración, este va a ir con un gerund. Y no le vamos a poner el for. Entonces, eh, no sé si eso quizás la habrá confundido. No sé qué. O si gusta, puede compartir el, el video conmigo para ver eh, en qué sentido es que estaban utilizando los gerunds ahí. Porque sí tiene muchos sí. usos los gerunds. Sí, porque es lo que estaba haciendo como reforzando lo, lo que estaba haciendo en la plataforma y busqué justamente infinitivos con gerundios. Y ah. me salió ese video y me quedé con esa duda. Sí, Pero sí es que sí está. tienen uh, tienen muchos usos los gerunds. Este es uno. Y otro es que antes de cualquier preposición, si yo pongo una preposición y luego un verbo, este verbo tiene que tomar el, el, el ING. Pero sí hay, hay ocasiones en que el, el gerund no lleva el to, el, el for, como en este caso que le explicaba. Y igual podemos ir más allá en el tema. Como les decía, hay muchos usos, pero en la plataforma lo estamos viendo para eh, cuando queremos expresar cuál es el uso o el propósito de algo. Y cuando ese es el caso, siempre le vamos a poner for um, antes del de verbo con ing. Pero hay casos en que no. Es cuando tiene otros eh, eh, usos, el, el gerund. También les puedo explicar más a profundidad eso para solventar cualquier duda. Y vi que otros dos Thank levantaron you, la mano. Ok. Eh, José. Uh, hi, uh, I have a question. Oh, well, it's a favor. As, uh, do you have a list of prepositions that we can use to a preposition with, with which one we can use the gerunds? And for example, for, at, in, like, of. I, I don't know if you have a, a complete all, list. All the prepositions can be used with a gerund. Eh, como le explicaba la compañera, y les voy a poner más ejemplos. Y está muy bien, vean los, lo, lo que puedan. Eh, si ven tutoriales en YouTube y les queda alguna duda, eh, anótenlo o me pueden mandar el enlace para que yo en algún chance vea el video y luego les explique qué es lo que los ha confundido. Porque... Eh, eh, esto es así. Esta clase es para que podamos ampliar el conocimiento. No estoy atada a la plataforma. Y ahorita es lo que estamos haciendo. Estamos ampliando. La plataforma me dice, vamos a enseñar con el, el infinitive y el gerund para decir el propósito de algo. Pero igual podemos eh, 
ir más allá, pues este es el propósito, que ustedes amplíen su conocimiento. Eh, como les decía, eh, con las preposiciones, lo que preguntaba el compañero puede ser cualquier preposición. Si yo estoy hablando de mis intereses, eh, utilizo in. Eh, como por ejemplo, eh, estoy interesada en, um, en aprender panadería, digamos. So digo, I am interested in. Tengo que usar in cuando voy a hablar de mis intereses y luego el verbo con ing. En este caso es aprender. In learning. Puede ser un segundo idioma. I interested in learning a second language. Ok, so si estoy hablando de mis intereses, voy a utilizar in y luego el verbo con ing, como en este caso. I interested in learning a second language. Si estoy hablando de mis habilidades, en qué yo soy buena, qué es algo que yo puedo hacer, o digamos que algo que no puedo hacer igual puede ser negativo, solo le agregamos el not. Eh, I can say I am good. Um, digamos, ah, I am good at playing soccer. Soy bueno jugando fútbol. So in this case, vamos a usar at. Y así. Eh, ok, ya se fue a dormir alguien por ahí. Ok, uh, okay. Y, y así. Podemos ver, pero sí, siempre después de cualquier preposición, si va a ubicar un verbo, tiene que ser con ing. No sé si les ayudó esto. Yes. Ok, y ahorita es como por si se me olvida, ya más o menos le expliqué, pero no creo que se me olvide. <ríe> Mañana Thank vamos you. a ver más sobre las spelling rules y ya, ya me pasé <ríe> la otra clase. Yeah. Ok, <ríe> so I'm going to write it down and I'm going to prepare some extra material for you for, for tomorrow. Ok, thank you okay. for joining. Thanks a lot. Okay. See you. Oh, good night. Thank you. Bye. Good night. Good night, teacher. Good night. 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 Good night.